Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we glorify your name. Lord, we give you honor. We give you glory. We give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 God, you're worthy. God, you're worthy. God, you're worthy. God, you're worthy. Praise the Lord, everyone. We praise God for being in his house on today. We thank him for allowing us to see another day of life. We give him the honor and the glory and the praise because God is so worthy. And we greet each of you who thought it not robbery to come out and lift up the name of Jesus with us on today. And we also welcome you online who are watching online. We greet you in Jesus' name from Bethel Outreach Ministries. We are located at 16134 Hannah Road, Lutes, Florida, 33549. Our pastor is Dwayne A. Mickens, Sr. Our first lady is Sonia Mickens, and we greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask that you just open your hearts and your minds to receive what the Lord has for you today. Don't look to the right, don't look to the left, just look to the hills from whence cometh your help, knowing that your help cometh from the Lord. At this time, we're going to ask you to stand. We're going to have our scripture reading on this morning. After we read our scripture, we're going to have our prayer from Deacon Thompson, and after his voice, we'll turn it over to our praise worship leader on today. Our scripture is coming from Philippians chapter 4, going to begin at verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. We pray that the God of peace will be with each of you on today. Rest upon him, praise God. Continue to look to him for everything that you need is in Jesus. At this time, we'll have our prayer by Deacon Thompson. Come on, give God some praise in the house. Come on, talk about Jesus. Come on, get out of the house. Hallelujah. And prepare for our soul's throne of grace in Jesus' mother's name. Let every heart pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you, give thanks to you, Jesus, for what thou has already done. Hallelujah. Has already kept us through the night. Thank you, Jesus. Has already keep us in our right mind. Lord, we have eight gifts of our limbs. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because all that all already stuff is done. Be in our minds, Lord, we come to the house of prayer this morning. Amen. We give you praise, Jesus, for all that thou hast done. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I want to thank you, Lord Jesus, because you didn't have to do it, Lord Jesus. Some of us have been cut off. We never seen you open our eyes this morning. Yeah. You, you remember us, Lord Jesus. hearing our prayers again. Yes. Lord Jesus, even though sometimes we come before you, Lord Jesus, same, same stuff, Lord. You are mighty God, yes, you are. loving God, peaceful God, and you show forth your hands for right now. Yes. Thank you right now, Jesus. Thank you. Our life, self, and strength. I thank you. 
kept me all day yesterday through my trials and tribulations. Lord, kept me in the right mind, Lord. Keep me, Lord Jesus, from all harm, danger, seen and unseen. And Lord Jesus, and I woke up this morning with my, with my eyes functioning, Lord Jesus. I saw where I was. I had access to my limb, Lord. My mind said, let's come to the house of prayer. So make way to come in, Lord Jesus. You enable me to travel on the highway. Get here, Lord Jesus. Thank you for that, Jesus. We all thank you right now, Jesus, for all that has already done in our lives. Even though some don't admit it, Lord Jesus. You, because of you, Lord, we are here. Because of you, we are here to give you praise. Because of you, here, we give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name. We thank you right now, Jesus, because you, hallelujah, made a way for us, Lord. You made a way for us by dying for me. And we know who knew who you were, Lord. You died for us. Hallelujah, you made a way for us, Lord. Shed the blood for us, Jesus. We made a way, Lord Jesus, we you know, left here alone. Yeah. You comfort us, Lord. You send your spirit, Lord Jesus, to guide us and lead us in the truth. It's the Holy Ghost. And your word, Lord, abides within us, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Jesus, for your way. We want to press your way out this morning. Hallelujah. We want to press your way out and watch this live on TV. In the name of Jesus. Lord, as we prepare ourselves for the gift of the word to say, the best man of God has come forth, Lord. And let us hear from heaven this hour. Let him speak. May you have given us here, Lord. You know what we need for we ask, Jesus. In that name alone, we ask these things. We give praise in advance, Lord Jesus. Thank you right now for allowing us to sing. As the praise team come, Lord Jesus, uplift us. Lord, let the angels sing all this and Lord Jesus. Give you praise, Lord. Praise you, praise you, Lord. Marvelous name, Jesus. Praise you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just thank you, Lord. Thank you for enough, Lord. God has done. In this old body, my dear, for if you right now, Lord Jesus, I thank you for able to stand here. Lord Jesus, tell you, thank you, Jesus. Probably aching in your body. Thankful to be here in, in the land of the living, represent the kingdom, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for everyone else who prepared, prepared himself here. In the name of the Lord God. We continue on. Bless us now, Lord. We shall be blessed. Keep us now, Jesus, and we shall be kept by that mighty hand alone. And all the praise, all the glory, all the honor be given to you. In Jesus' marvelous name. Church says, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, we're, we're here to praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to encourage you on this morning that if you have uh, little children, you can let them be free. Now is a great time to let their energy uh, be expended and to teach them the importance of not sitting down on the Lord, but getting up and singing and waving their hands and moving around. We also want to encourage you to do the same. Amen? Um, because when we come into the house of God, we understand that we've come for a purpose, we've come with expectation that God is going to impart unto us knowledge that we're gonna be able to take out through the week and use to be a witness of his glory and his power. And we come together for encouragement and we come together for strength. And so if you feel weary in your body, you know, our, our deacon was just praying, you know, that we might have aches and pains, but God, you're still able and willing to move and to deliver and set free. And we only need one or two, right? So I make one, and then I just need one other person, and I said the Lord would be in the midst. And now all we have to do is come together in agreement. 
that God is going to move, that he's going to deliver, that our young people are going to be saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, and that we're going to be transformed with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. I'm asking that you sing with me, that you praise with me, that you glorify God with me, because I really do want to decrease so that all you see is God and that your minds and your hearts desire to draw closer to him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
you God we praise you Jesus hallelujah 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 Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah and we come to give God praise on this morning hallelujah hallelujah you can go ahead and put your hands together like this you can continue to lift up your hands you can con con continue to give God a praise. Hallelujah. 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 And this glory upon the nation. The Lord is high above the heaven. And this glory upon the nation. The Lord is high above the heaven. And this glory upon the nation. The Lord is high above the heavens and this glory upon the nation. Give God the highest praise, acknowledging Him always. And all God's people say, Halle, Halle, Alleluia. Halle, Halle, Alleluia. Oh, the Lord is high above the heavens and this glory upon the nation. The Lord is high above the heavens and this glory upon the nation. The Lord is high above the heavens and this glory upon the nation. The Lord is high above the heavens and this glory upon the nation. Give God the highest praise and God loves you. And all God's people say, Halle, Halle, Alleluia. Halle, Halle, Alleluia. Oh, the Lord is high above the heaven. And this glory upon the nation. The Lord is high above the heaven. And this glory upon the nation. The Lord is high above the heaven. And this glory upon the nation. The Lord is high above the heavens. And this glory upon the nation. Give God the highest praise, acknowledging Him always. And all God's people say, Halle, Halle, Alleluia. Halle, Halle, Alleluia. Oh, oh, Halle.
of glory and honor. Hallelujah. Just a time to sing and to worship. 
And we know that even though we have our number here, there are brothers and sisters all over the world, all over the country, and on this very day, singing unto the King of Kings and shouting, Hosanna, 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 Hosanna to the highest. Amen. They're shouting, you are King of Kings. You are Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. There's thousands, hundreds of thousands of people right now telling God how great he is. Let's join them and say, Lord, you're great and greatly to be praised. God, you're wonderful. God, you're worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah. We come into agreement that you are king of kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in this house, we will not let a rock cry out for us. We will come before the Lord with thanksgiving. We will come before the Lord with a worship, with a praise, because we know that he's worthy. We're going to turn the hand, the service into the hands of our speaker on this morning. But I promise you that when he comes before us with the word of God, if we have good ground, good soil for the word to fall on, it will be transformative. And when we leave this place, we will not leave the same. Amen? Amen. God bless you all. Somebody give the Lord a hand praise. Just shout unto God with a voice of triumph. For we have victory in Jesus who has overcome the world. For all those that believe on him, when he hung on the cross and said it was finished, he defeated death, hell, and the grave. So it doesn't mean that you're not gonna go through anything. It doesn't mean that you're not gonna have problems in this life. What it means that in the end, we win. And in the end, the latter shall be greater than the former. Paul said that I reckon for the sufferings of this present time aren't worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. So basically what that's saying is, no matter what the situation is and how bad it may seem, what God has prepared for you is greater than anything that you're dealing with right now. And I know sometimes that's, that's easier said than done when times are tough and it's hard to see a resolve to an issue because it seems to surround your thoughts, the anxiety, the pressures of life begin to weigh you down. It's at that time where we need to take upon the Lord's yoke because it's easy and his burden is light. And then you cast your cares. So everybody, I just want you to do this. Everybody touch your back real quick. Everybody just touch your back real quick. Don't scratch it, just grab back there. What we're doing is we're symbolically just casting our cares. And I want you to just take your hand like you're pitching a baseball and just throw it forward. Just begin to cast your cares. Just begin to cast those cares unto him. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. God, we praise you. There's deliverance in the house right now. There's healing in the house right now. There's breakthrough in the house right now. If you just begin to believe and trust in him, that he is greater than anything that the devil is trying to lie to you and tell you that he isn't. I promise you, I know it's hard. I promise you, I know it's difficult. I promise you that it seems like this time is never going to go, never going to end. It may have been months, it may have been years, but God is still able. Amen. It's going to be led by the Spirit here on today. I just want God to breathe in every single one of your hearts and lives that you have what you need here. We're just going to start off with prayer. We're going to do something a little unorthodox. I want everybody to just get close to somebody. And we're going to start off prayer, but I want you to pray for the person next to you. Wherever that is, find them. And if somebody's not moving, I want you to go to them. 
Because maybe it may be hard for them to move right now. Yep, doesn't matter your age. If you're little, you're big, you maybe not know how to pray. What I want you to do is, I just want you to ask God to touch, to help, to move in the person's life that you're praying for, young people. I know it's you Sunday, but I know right now, God is getting ready to move. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you right now, Lord God, for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your power, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So right now, Lord God, no matter what the situation, the enemy trying to fight us, trying to fight our families, or maybe it's us, maybe it's our own thoughts, maybe it's our own desires, maybe it's our own things that we have going on. Lord God, I just ask, Lord God, that we surrender those things unto you. Lord God, all the anxiety, Lord God, all the pressures, Lord God, all the situations, Lord God, whether it be going on in our homes, in our families, in our marriages, Lord God, in our relationships, in our jobs, Lord God, I just ask, Lord God, that you begin to turn it around right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Move in our lives, Lord Jesus. We trust in you, Lord God. We come against Lord God, and cancel the plan of the enemy, Lord God. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you cancel the plan of the enemy, Lord God. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you send your angels, Lord God, and give them assignment to cancel and fight our battles for us, Lord God, because we don't have the power on our own, Lord God, but you, Lord God, you, Jesus, you have the power, Lord God, and we surrender ourselves unto you, and we humbly and graciously ask, Lord God, that you do this for us. Please, Lord God, have mercy on us, Lord God. Oh, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us, oh God. We humbly submit ourselves unto you. We humbly ask that you hear these prayers. We humbly ask, oh God, just like the woman with the issue of blood, that if we could just touch a hem of his garment, that we would be made whole right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you. We will believe that you're doing it right now. Right now, right now. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' holy and precious name. We pray amen. And amen. Father God, just breathe. Whoever's listening on the live stream, I pray that you just breathe into them the word of life breathe into them salvation break the bands of iniquity and sin and chains over their lives over their families lives because the enemy may come to kill steal and destroy oh god but you are a mighty battle axe you are victorious against him but you just ask that we surrender our lives and ourselves to you if you believe that just say amen and amen so we're not afraid to pray there's a lot of places that they don't have fear to pray but who are you praying to because there's only power in one and that is in the name of Jesus. There's no other name under heaven or earth whereby men shall be saved than the name of Jesus. There is only one way to God, and that is through Jesus Christ. He is the only mediator. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. And so as it was wrote to the church in Rome in the first chapter in the 16th verse, but we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power unto everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek.
Amen, amen. Now, yes, it is our Youth Sunday. And we get ready to go back to school, right, guys? Everybody ready to go back to school? I got one hand. Praise the Lord. School is good for you. It's good to be educated. It's good to know math and science and things that will help you be able to take care of yourself as you get older. But one thing in, in school, as you all know, that there come pressures from your friends and people that maybe they don't live the same type of life that you live. Maybe they don't believe some of the same things that you do. And you guys may be experiencing a lot of different views, a lot of different things that people like and yeah, that may be contradictive. And what contradict means is it's different from Christianity. So if you're going right, they're going left. You're going up, they're going down. Right? But sometimes that makes it hard when you're trying to keep friends, people that you knew for a while. But it's good to be unashamed. Everybody say unashamed. unashamed. All my young people, let me hear you say unashamed. unashamed. Preston, let me hear you say unashamed. <laughs> Just having some fun. All right. Unashamed. Does anybody know what unashamed means? What does that mean? One of my young people, tell me, what does unashamed mean? Anybody want to tell me? Somebody help them out. Means that you're not embarrassed, that you're not afraid of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what it means. All right? It just means that you're not scared of what God has given you. All right? So we're going to talk about being unashamed in difficult times. I do have a PowerPoint. It's right up here. It talks about why Christ is greater than cancel culture. And just know if I did call your name, I'm not here to pick on anybody. I'm just here to encourage you. You need to know that you're loved, that I think you're great, and that I want God to do great things in your life. All right? All right. So, being unashamed, not being embarrassed, being bold for Jesus. This means that you can't be shaken. It means no matter what nobody says, somebody comes up to you and says, well, you know what? I don't go to church. And I don't believe in God. What do you guys think about that? How does that make you feel? Huh? Make you feel sad for them? But how would you respond? Maybe you don't know. Well, after this message, I want you to have such a level of confidence in the gospel of Jesus Christ that you will know how to respond and you will know what you believe in. Next slide. I want you to have this level of confidence. We'll go to the next slide. Go ahead and play the video. Get the videos. Uh, there, there's no video. Okay, no problem. So yeah, actually if you click right under that picture that's there, it'll play. It'll play. Wait, man, we, did, we don't have a video. Okay, no problem, no problem. All right, so we'll go ahead to the next slide. Basically, in this video right here, the gentleman just explains that if you go to heaven and you don't see me there, you have gone to hell. <laughs> And of course, he's a little arrogant, right? We're not God, so you don't write your name in the book of life, right? But there is such a thing as biblical assurance, things that let us know biblically that we are on the right path to receiving or have receiving eternal life, right? All right, so we're going to read two different scriptures, and both of them come from 2 Timothy. We're going to start off with 2 Timothy 2, 
11 through 15, okay? And this is the easy read version. This is what ERV means. Just makes it easier for you guys to understand. I know sometimes King James, you know, uses some language that you may not be familiar with, which is perfectly fine. But I went ahead and found a, a version to translate what it really says from the Greek over into an easy way that doesn't lose any of its context. And that's what this does. All right, so we'll read that. And we'll read it together. So I'll read a verse, and then you all will read a verse. If you can't see that, just let me know. But when you have it, just signify by saying amen. Everybody just stand for the reading of the word, if you can. All right, it says, here is a true statement. If we died with him, we will also live with him. All right, so if we refuse to say we know him, he will refuse to say he knows us. Keep on telling everyone these truths and warn them before God not to argue about words. Such arguments don't help anyone and they ruin those who listen to them. Do your best to be the kind of person God will accept and give yourself to him. Be a worker who has no reason to be ashamed of his work, one who applies the true teaching in the right way. All right, awesome. So be not ashamed. Apply God's teaching in the right way. All right, so let's move over to the next scripture, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. All right, it says, but understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy. Heartless, unappeasable slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having the appearance of godliness but denying its power, avoid such people. Amen. May God have a blessing to the hearers and doers of his word. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. All right. So, we have two epistles here that Paul actually wrote to Timothy, okay? We'll talk a little bit more about those, but he wrote these to Timothy, who went with him through his missionary journeys, and basically, he was telling him what he needs to be prepared for, what he needs to expect, okay? And he says this, if we died with him, we will also live with him. Does anybody know what that means when it says if we also die with him? It doesn't mean that you physically die, right? It may mean that. So I don't want to say it doesn't completely mean that. But what Paul is referring to here is he's talking about dying to your old self, dying to your sinful self, dying to the things that the world may want you to do, okay? So if the world says... All right, smoke crack? You say, no, I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to live a healthy lifestyle. The world says, punch your friends in the face. You say, no, I'm not going to punch my friends in the face. I'm going to hug my friends because that's going to help me have more friends. All right? So we die to those things that the world is trying to push onto us, and then we, we live to be with God. All right? Now, he goes on and he says, keep on telling everyone these truths. But when you're telling them these truths, don't be argumentative. Don't run up in the school hall with your Bible and say, God told you not to lie, why'd you lie? And then smack them upside the head with the Bible. That's not going to encourage them to be a Christian. Okay? It's only going to cause more problems. It's only going to make them have more animosity towards you. And you're probably not going to win them over. You have to use wisdom, okay? Because it says, do your best to be kind, all right? But after he tells them all this, in the very next chapter, 
He tells him that difficult times are going to come. It's going to get hard, okay? You're playing on the hardest level on Mario Kart, it makes it harder. Play at the hardest level on Fortnite or whatever game that you like, it makes it harder. It's a higher level of difficulty. What he's saying is that this is what's going to happen in life. The difficulty is going to be increased. It's not going to be as easy to beat the big boss, right? Says times of difficulty. So it's going to say people will be lovers of self. It means they care about themselves more than they care about you. They see that you're struggling on the side of the road. They're not going to stop. They're just going to keep on going. They're going to be lovers of money, which means that they'll be willing to do anything to get the money. Kill, steal, destroy. Sound familiar? Okay, proud, arrogant, abusive. Okay, your parents may want you to hear this one. Disobedient to their parents. Okay, that means, you know, the first commandment is, anybody know what the first commandment, first commandment is? Who want to help them out? What's the first commandment? Okay. The Lord God, with all that heart, mind, and strength. Okay. And then, one of those very important commandments in there is honor thy mother and thy father, because what? Thy days will be long upon the earth. Right? So, talks about all these things. All right. Now, next slide. Now, knowing, the, knowing these things, you go to the next slide, I got a question for you. Are you scared of who you are on Sunday? What that means is, do your friends know that you're a Christian? If they don't, is it that you're afraid to mention it? You don't know how to mention it? Not sure where that takes you? So are you truly unashamed? What does it mean to be truly unashamed? Does it mean that I got to stand with a Jesus shirt in the middle of the schoolhouse and say, everybody believe in Jesus? No, it doesn't necessarily mean that. What it means to be truly unashamed is when the time comes for you to make a stand, all right? What that means is, let's say you're sitting with your friends and they're telling you to cheat on the test. Say, hey, man, let me get the answers off your test. I didn't study last night. Let me just peek on over. You know that lying is wrong, right? Cheating on your test is wrong. So what would you do? You say, no, I'm not going to cheat on my test. You being truthful in that moment is you identifying with Christianity, being, being truthful in that. Does that make sense? Okay. That's a faction of being unashamed. It's actually living out your Christian values in everyday life, all right? Next question for you guys. Why do you believe in Jesus? Do you know the answer to that? By a show of hands, can anybody tell me that you know why you believe in Jesus? Honestly. Young people, I see no hands raised, and that's fine. So why do we believe in Jesus? Why is the message of the gospel important? Okay? The Bible lets us know that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, right? That means that all have done wrong, all have fallen to the wayside, all have gone astray from God. So what that means is that when you were born, Adam and Eve had already eaten the fruit. Sin had entered the world, okay? And because sin entered the world, you weren't friends with God. God wasn't your buddy. Because we have sin in us, God is angry with sinners every day. Okay? That means that we weren't friends with God. And what Jesus does is he took our sin on the cross and he took on the wrath of God. That means the anger that God had against sin that Adam and Eve brought in through eating the tree. He took that and took it on the cross and died for you so that instead of you taking the anger of God, you got the love of God. 
that justly belonged to a sinless person who only Jesus had walked the earth as. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay? So Jesus, what Jesus did was, knowing that you would be sinful, knowing that you wouldn't really have an affinity towards him necessarily, because we all have more of a propensity to be sinful. You do not have to teach a child to be devious. Children are naturally devious. They naturally do things that are deviant because we were all born and shaven in sin. And so what Jesus comes and he does is he comes and gives you a new heart and a new mind and a new way to think about things. He recreates your mind. This is what happens in the salvation process. When you repent and you believe on Jesus and salvation takes place, it's not just like a snap of a finger and everything changes, but he causes your reality, the way that you look at things, to change. And then slowly, little by little, you begin to conform more and more to how Jesus looks and less how the world looks. This is something that is called sanctification. Say sanctification. sanctification. And so this is why we believe in Jesus. We believe in Jesus because Jesus loved us when we had no reason to be loved. Jesus died for us when we had no reason to be died for. There was nothing that you or I have done that is so great, that is so wonderful, that the God of the entire universe would step down from his kingdom, wrap himself in flesh to be beaten, to be tortured, to be spit on, to not only do that, but once he's done it, once we lived our lives, spend a good portion of our lives not listening to what he tells us to do. That's really what it is. So let me put it in perspective for you. Let's say you got a million dollars. Anybody want a million dollars? Yes. Oh, I see some hands now. All right, you want a million dollars. So let's say with that a million dollars, you take 800,000 of it and you give it to one of your friends. You make sure they have everything that they need. You make sure that they're best in the, dressed in the best clothes. They have all the food that they want. And then when you come over to visit them, they don't want you to come in their house. They don't want you to eat their food. What you gonna be thinking? You're ungrateful. Man, the only reason you got this, because I pay for it. This is my money. The only reason you're here is because of me. Or else you'd be buried on the side of the street somewhere. Right? Right? That's what you'd be thinking. This is literally what it looks like in God's eyes when he has given us all things in him. And we basically scoff at it like, eh, thanks God for this stuff, but I don't really need you. Because I got my own way of doing things. Next question, do you believe you've come into saving faith? Do you believe that God has truly saved you. How many believe that God has truly saved them? These are the questions that I want you to ask yourself. Why not? Or why do you? We are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, not by works. So this is anything that you work for, that you can boast about it, but this is truly by the power of God alone that Sin is revealed to you through the power of the preaching of the gospel. You realize that you are sinful and that you need a savior. You confess these sins to God. Truly ask him for forgiveness. Plead him for forgiveness, which a lot of times we call tearing or pleading to God. And then God grants you salvation and gives you a new heart and a new mind. And then you begin to walk with Christ. And a walk with Christ doesn't look like perfection, guys. So that's not what it is. It doesn't mean that you're going to choose to live with Jesus and you're not going to have a desire to do anything bad anymore. That is a lie. You are still very much in your regular human form, which we call our flesh, and your human form, which is your flesh, and your spirit, man, do this all day. They fight like brother and sister, but they're not friends. They don't like each other at all. And one is, one, one is always trying to one-up the other. But whoever you feed more is who's going to be stronger. So if you're 
you read your Bible and you pray to God and you seek to know him more, then your spirit man gets stronger. But if you do more fleshly things, which it's okay to enjoy some things, but if all you do is play video games all day and, you know, just entertain yourself all day, well, then your flesh person is going to be stronger and you'll find it a lot harder to really follow Jesus because there's nothing in you to fight with. And so that fight back and forth, guess who's winning? The one who's eating more food. The one who's getting bigger and stronger. Okay. Next, do you feel ready to answer the hard questions about what's in the Bible? Why do you believe what you believe? Why do you believe in Jesus? Do you know that Jesus is a story that was stolen from so many other religions? And some of you may not be getting those questions yet, but they're coming. They may be getting them at their age. Or, or why is it that you don't believe in two moms? Or why is it that you don't believe in two dads? You know, why does the Bible teach that? Do you feel that you're ready to answer these hard questions? Next slide. If you're scared, come to church. Now, some of you may be familiar with this term if you listen to secular music. But no, truly, if you are scared, you come to church, and I'm going to tell you why. We're going to talk a little bit about Timothy and why I chose the epistle of Timothy. Timothy was actually a young man, okay? He was a young disciple of Paul. He lived in Lystra, and he became a believer during Paul's missionary journey there. Now, his story is similar to a lot of you all that are sitting here. He was familiar with the faith because his grandma went to church. Grandmother Lois. Funny thing is, my grandmother's name was Lois. So his grandmother was in the faith, which a lot of you may come here. Your grandmother may be in the faith, and then grandmother passed it down to guess who? The mother. The mother Eunice. You find this in 2 Timothy, first chapter. Fifth verse. So he had family members that was in the church. That was bringing them there to learn. Okay? But one thing that was different about Timothy, even though he had strong faith, he was scared. Anybody ever been scared? Anybody ever been truly scared to have it out there that you're a Christian at different moments? Maybe you haven't. I have. It's not always easy. But I want to let you guys know that it's okay if you felt fear before. That's a natural human emotion. Yep. But there's a scripture that you've probably heard a lot. Anybody ever heard this? For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and sign mind. Probably heard it a lot. Yeah. Guess who that was written to? Timothy. Amen. Because Paul knew it. He knew that he was going to have fear, and Timothy was living at a time where it was a lot harder to be a Christian. So it wasn't just that maybe somebody didn't want to hear about your faith, and they may talk about you, you know, online or on your Snapchat or your TikTok or whatever it is, you know, that you like to do. You know, that's, that's the way that persecution is more modern. You feel a certain way and put it on TikTok. Put some Christian on TikTok that's counter to what people believe and you'll find that there's a lot of people that don't like the way that you think well in Timothy's day people were the same way but instead of them leaving comments they were willing to kill you or throw you in prison for saying that Jesus was the savior of the world and so this brought fear and then this is why Paul told him that difficult times were coming so he could prepare him. And he said, don't be fearful because God didn't give you that spirit of fear, but of love, power, yeah. and a sound mind. Somebody say love, love power, power, and a sound mind. sound mind. The only way to solve fear is to submit to God and be filled with the Holy Ghost. So that you can walk in truth and power. All right, next slide.
I talked about cancel culture here. And the reason why I talked about cancel culture is because young people, this is the reality of the world that you're living in. Your world is digital. Your friends are on different sites. You all know. How many know what TikTok is? How many have been on TikTok before? Don't know what TikTok is? Snapchat, Instagram, okay? There's maybe some other ones I don't know about there because I'm a little older now. Those seem some of the main ones. And the thing about these, these websites that you like, you know, you do your little dances, and you do your little challenges, and those are fun, but when it comes to stating a belief that's contrary to what people believe, such as, you know, I don't believe that a baby should be killed inside the womb, or I don't believe that two men should be married, or I don't believe that there is any other way to God but through Jesus Christ. I believe he's the only way. If you have those ideas, guess what? A good portion of the digital world, not all, but a good portion of the digital world does not like you and does not agree with you. And it's one thing to have a little bit of opposition, but when there's a large amount of people that are causing you pressure, it makes a little bit harder for you to stand firm. But I want you to remember this. That cancel culture can't cancel God. You're more than conquerors in Christ. So there's just some things I want you to remember this school year as you come into another year. If God is with you, you have everything you need. That means no matter what they say, no matter what somebody may be trying to do to you, just submit yourself to God. Talk to your parents. Talk to somebody that's in the faith. If you got questions, reach out. The answers in the Bible, the answers in people that have wisdom and some of the things that you've already experienced. I was in school at one time. It was a long time ago. But I was in school at one time. I remember what it was like. Next thing, be authentic. That means be who you truly are. Be a leader, not a follower. So that means just because your friends are doing something and you think that would make you cool, if you know it's not right, don't follow them up. Be a leader. Be like, no, I'm not going to do that. That's not cool because I do it this way, this way, and that way. And if the people you are hanging with have a problem with that, guess what? They're really not your friends. If the people that you hang around don't respect your values and who you truly are as a person, they are not your friends. Let me say it again. If the people that you hang around don't value what you truly believe, they are not your friends. School happens really fast, guys. You go from one grade to the next, you'll be at a different school. Some of those kids you was hanging with are not going to be at the new school. You go to the next school, they may not going to be at that school either. Like, these people will go on with life. But what you got to live with is what you personally chose for yourself, and you got to make a decision to be who you really are in Christ. Next, read your Bible and talk to God. Can everybody commit to that for me? Who can commit to read their Bible and talk to God? You're going to ask your parents, hey, I want to read my Bible and talk to God this week. Okay? Because the only way that you're actually going to get a deeper relationship with God is if you really know him and seek him. God says, seek me while I may be found. Knock and the door shall be open. That means he's not hiding from you, but if you never go looking for him, he's not just going to pop up. You got to go looking. All right? Don't fear. Finally, don't fear, but be filled with the Holy Ghost and walk in power. Everybody stand at this time. Everybody stand at this time. I just wanted to be an encouragement to the young people here today that it doesn't matter how young you are. You know, I know some of you are 80 and younger. And most of the time at that age, for the most part, you just, you know, you come to church, kind of have fun a little bit with your friends, you kind of play. You know, that's just what it is. I remember those times, all right? But it's never too early to start your relationship seriously with God. Because 
And nobody's tomorrow is promised. If you have a knowledge of what's right and wrong, and what good and evil is, you need to take your relationship with God seriously when you're younger, because it's easier to build up the right habits and to continue on to an adulthood, rather than create bad habits and trying to break them later on down the road. Because when you're used to doing something wrong for 10, 15 years, it's kind of hard to stop doing it. And you got to retrain yourself not to do it anymore. So if you make it a habit to wake your sibling up every morning by slapping them in the back of the head, I want you to stop. And I want you to do something nice. Give them an encouraging word. Give them a hug. Tell them that you love them. All right? Little decisions make big impacts down the road. All my young people, just come up, stand up here for me real quick. I want you all just to grab hands. We're going to say a prayer for you. I know pastor's going to pray for you again for the school year, but this is Youth Sunday, and this is about y'all. Huh? I'm not asking you to come up here and dance or 